All right, in this video, we will dive into something very important. If you're on our website, there we show the tools that we use. And if you look into the PKM section, which is the personal knowledge management section, there are actually three tools in there. Reader from Readwise, Tana and Heptabase. So people get confused. Why do you use several tools for the same purpose, which is personal knowledge management, if you could just use one tool? Well, there's a specific reason, and it is part of the ICO methodology that we call shallow thinking and deep thinking. And that's something we will discuss in this video and also the information flow going through the different tools until we convert the information into action. I can't wait to dive into this, so let's go. Paperless movement, your productivity, your way. Let's talk first of all what these three different tools actually are. All right, so obviously... They are not all note-taking apps, but it's also knowledge management. So Reader, for those who don't know this, Reader is actually an app made by Readwise. And Readwise itself is an application. Very quickly, for those who don't know about this, Readwise was there first and it allowed us to integrate with Kindle. That's the most famous thing they became known for. So whenever you make highlights while you're reading a Kindle book, it will synchronize. And then thanks to space repetition, you will be presented with these highlights over and over again. And therefore you're learning what you've been actually extracting from these books. That's the idea from Readwise. So they evolved a lot by starting to integrate with other tools, Heptabase and Tana are just two of them, but there are also Obsidian, Notion, so many other tools where you can synchronize these highlights with these tools. That's just for the understanding. Now then they developed the Reader app and it's a Read Later app. Okay, so if you know about Pocket, Raindrops, they are all tools that allow you to save links and articles and read them later. That's why it's a Read Later app. But Reader can actually do a lot more. I will do a separate video about Reader, so make sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to see this one. But for now, it's enough to know that I can store information inside Reader to read it later. And this information I can then calmly read in a distraction-free way and highlight in there. So when I saved an article, I'm reading the article, I can highlight it. And the highlight in Reader gets then synchronized to Readwise and therefore then synchronized back to these tools that Reader is integrated with. So that's a key understanding that we need to understand and that already shows why we are using different apps. But now we have Tana and Heptabase and that's what we want to tackle now, talking about shallow thinking and deep thinking. In order to easily understand this, we have to think as if this would be a funnel, all right? So you're on the web, you're browsing the web, you find something interesting, and then you want to save this to your Read Later app. And that's where people then get confused because this is the first step. You really have to think about, do I actually do this step at all? Or can I actually Google this later on or search this later on and find it much easier, the information, than saving it in the Read Later app? The Read Later app to me is really about distraction-free reading and initial labeling of the content that I'm saving. So in order to understand this, let's bring in an actual funnel. And now we have the web there and I find some information and then I pull this information, I save this information in my Read Later app in Reader. And therefore, I get loads of loads of stuff in there that becomes very overwhelming if I would have saved this in my note-taking app. Let's just assume you're using Apple Notes or even Evernote or any others, Obsidian, Notion, you can name whatever you like. And now Envision, or maybe you're even doing this, you save everything that come ac you come across, you capture it in this note-taking app. Especially if this note-taking app doesn't have an inbox feature, then this becomes really messy because you will just fill this note-taking app up and you get overwhelmed finding anything later on. That's why we do here the distilling where we fill in anything that sparks our thoughts, might be interesting for later on. All these things get saved in the Read Later app. The amazing thing, by the way, about the Reader app is also that it can save YouTube videos and it's it shows directly the transcription and then I can read through the transcription, clicking on it and it will jump into the video, into the space and I can do highlights and these highlight extractions will then synchronize to my other tools. Just as a side note, I really like about Reader as well. So the next step would be Tana. And the last step is Heptabase. Does this mean now that we have to follow always this direction? 
always start with the Relator app? What about notes that come to mind and all this? Where do I place them? That's key. That's something that we teach in the Paperless Movement membership in i -Core, to understand there are different information types. And depending on the information type that comes to mind, that comes across, you have to store it in different places that you've defined. So in our case, we are using three tools. But in other cases, it might be sufficient just having one tool. You could do everything in Tana, no doubt about this. You could everything do in a heptabase. You can do it in Notion or on a piece of paper. The process is tool agnostic. That's the key. Understanding the information, understanding that there are different types of information and defining the final destination for this information, this is key. And where it ends up in the application, this is totally up to you. But these are the tools that we concluded are the best to be used for busy professionals like we are. Do you need to use them? No, not at all, but I will explain why we are using these tools. And in order to better understand this, I bring in a brain here, just one brain. And then this is here the extract. That's the essence of the information that we want to get into our brain the moment we need it. Conclusions, insights out of this. If I try to get the information in here, this becomes very overwhelming. Tana is already helping a lot more with this, with organization, with tags and all this. And it is already an outliner. So you're already synthesizing information in Tana. But in Heptabase, there is where the magic happens when it comes to understanding. And in fact, we could also bring in for different purpose, Miro, okay? Miro, that's what I'm using here, for example, to show you this stuff as well. Miro as well. Why do I bring in these two? Because they are both visual tools. Here, I can drag in whatever I want and then I can make sense out of it. You see, I can much better explain it to you visually than I would just keep talking. It's the same for Heptabase. But the beauty about Heptabase is that I have a note-taking application there as well. I can take my notes, I can give it tags similar to Tana where I can even build up databases and so on. So Heptabase could be totally used on its own for shallow thinking and deep thinking as well. However, we, and when I say we, I mean Paco, our co-founder and me, defined that Heptabase is our deep thinking tool and Tana is our shallow thinking tool. Also, there are moments where some deep thinking can happen. And the difference is really, in Tana, it's an outline. It's very easy to move things up and down. If you know the keyboard shortcuts, you are super fast. And therefore, I can give outlines, scripts, things like that. I can give it structure. I can move things very faster, a lot faster than I could do it in other tools. Whereas in Heptabase, I have the visual part where I can drag in all my note cards, and then give it more sense. So it's growing a lot slower, but it, it also promotes slow thinking. That's why deep thinking is key here. Shallow thinking is really capturing things very quickly. That's one key. A shallow thinking application should allow you to capture lightning fast. The moment you see something, it should be possible to capture it. Therefore, they need to exist on all the devices as well. So. This is where Tana really shines with their Tana Capture app. I can capture audio and then later transcribe it by AI inside Tana. I can forward articles and so on. It's very quickly that I can feed information into this application. And obviously for reader, it's a read later app. So they focus on this feature that you can capture things very quickly. But the question is then how you use this information later on. So therefore, as I said, in Reader, you have inboxes. There you can go in and then you read through the articles calmly the moment you have time for this. And then you start highlighting stuff. And these highlights then, thanks to Readwise, get synchronized to Tana. Right now, I also set it up that it also synchronizes to Heptabase. Another application I just want to quickly bring in to explain to you this better would be Snipped. So where, while Reader can actually, there you can capture articles, YouTube videos, PDF files, as I mentioned, all those things. But Snipped actually is a podcasting application, which is amazing. I'm using this all the time, especially with Apple CarPlay. While I'm driving, I'm listening to podcasts. There's something interesting. I tap Snipped and it, I will extract the transcription, make sense of it, and then 
sends it to Readwise and Readwise will forward this snip to my final destinations, which is Tana and Heptabase. And there I can use it then later on. So you see, it's all about frictionless capturing of information, but then moving it forward to the final destination where the real thinking process will happen. So as I said, part of it, we are using Tana also for deep thinking to create scripts, emails, presentations, all these things that you want to get into a sequential order. And Heptabase is really for deep thinking. I'm using it for personal development. So if you quickly check out Heptabase, there we are. You might have seen this. This is the My Life concept that we also teach inside the Pebbles Movement membership in the Heptabase Like a Pro course. There, I do my deep thinking about my health, about my happiness. That's the self-development part, but also you see the business. So let's go, for example, for YouTube, okay? Content strategy. And in content strategy, I have another board, which is YouTube strategy. And here you see, this is a board that keeps growing. I do research about thumbnails and anal analysis of different videos that I like watching and also recommendation, things like that. So you see, I instantly know when something comes across that is related to the YouTube strategy and how to grow as a YouTuber, then I know that I need to bring this information here. But something more trivial, like my skills, cooking skills. So here, I there's an iced tea I really liked. And I asked ChatGPT about the ingredients. And then I made some research and I bought the ingredients and I started to create my own iced tea. That was a development over time. And that's something I know exactly when I think about iced tea. This is the place to go for because that's all I need here to see. But in a, in a visual concept. Whereas if I go to Tana, that's a different game. You see, that's my CRM. And then I have a lot faster way to connect information. So when I say create video about versus Heptabase, base, okay. And then I just say video idea, boom, it creates this, that's the image. And now I have instantly a database with all the video ideas that I can go to and find ideas that I want to do next. And that's a complete different access. It's much faster to capture many things that allow me to move faster. I could now go in and, and make some notes. And this is just differently. But if I would have a complex video, and it's complex topics, I want to make sense out of it and so on, I might move to Heptabase for this topic to have the visual outline or then to Miro. And make a mirror board and then I think about this as we do right here together. Well, I hope this gave you already a better understanding why we are using these th three different tools. From top to down, it's about fast capturing and making sense of things, distraction-free reading, then extracting the essence that gets saved via Readwise into Tana or Heptabase. Obviously, if certain information comes across, as I just showed you with the YouTube thumbnails, things like that, I go directly to the final destination. There's no need to save this in reader and then go through the process because I know I need this on the board. But from top to bottom, it is easy capturing because Heptabase has a lot of friction when it comes to capture quickly. As of today, they have no fast way to capture information. And they still have no inbox. So in Tana, whenever I send anything via the capture feature, it ends up in the inbox. And then I can process the inbox like I would process an email inbox. And we have the course Email Management Like a Pro, where we talk a lot about inbox zero. And this doesn't only apply to emails. It also applies to any other tools where we have inboxes. And that's why we're big fans of inboxes, as this allows you to process them at the moment, you have the right mindset to do so. And that's what we consider the difference between shallow thinking and deep thinking. Obviously, there's a lot more to this. So if you really want to dive deep into the difference, shallow thinking, deep thinking, our capturing beast concept, the discover, capture, retrieve, workflows, all this, then I invite you to join the Paralysis Movement membership and check out our courses, Digital Note Taking Like a Pro and PKM Like a Pro, because there we explain you step-by-step step in a tool agnostic way how to process information until it gets either into your brain or project manager on task manager to get things done. 
as we think everything needs to be interconnected. Today we just talked about the information flow and into the brain so I can retrieve it. But the, the ultimate goal for us busy professionals is not only collecting information and hoarding them. We are not knowledge workers. We need to get shit done. And therefore we need to be able to retrieve the information the moment we need it. And then the most distilled version of this information in order to take it into action, to share it with the team so they don't get confused what to do. So many ways to leverage the information later on once you went through the process. If you're already a member in the Payless Movement membership, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. And if you're not, you're more than welcome to join us. And we are there to help you to put your knowledge management system to the next level. If you like the video, Give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel so I can catch you up in the next video.